Hi guys, I uh, hope you guys are doing well. Today's video is about statement of affairs and statement of affairs is, is a subtopic of incomplete records. Uh, and uh, this question basically is, is an old past paper. It's from IGCSE. Uh, the question here says, Virat is a trader, his financial year ends on 31st January, so his financial year starts on 1st February. Then they are saying he does not maintain a full set of accounting records. This Basically, this statement tells me that it's an incomplete records question. Then they are saying he was able to provide the following information at 1st February 2016. And the information that they have given you here, and they've given you premises, they've given you fixtures and fittings at cost, they've given you inventory, they've given you trade payable, they've given you trade receivables, they've given you loan from ASING, uh, and they've given you a bank overdraft. So then they are saying calculate Virat's capital at 1st February 2016. So you guys know they have given you assets and liabilities at the start of the year and they are asking you to calculate capital at the start of the year. So what you do is that you need to apply the formula capital is equal to assets minus liabilities so here when you need to calculate total assets so assets here are premises at cost is an asset fixtures and fittings at cost as an is an asset inventory is an asset trade receivables is an asset so we have four assets basically over here so i'll write here 58 500 plus 9400 plus 9700 uh, plus 8120 this is going to give me a total of 85 720 these are my assets then uh, for liabilities i will do 7100 plus uh, 15000 plus 5300 and this is going to give me a total of 27400 and then when i apply this formula capital is equal to assets minus liabilities is an accounting equation guys and this you do in chapter number one this is chapter number one of accounting basically the very very first few classes of accounting i mean first uh, the first ex exactly the first class of accounting and um, basically the accounting equation is assets is equal to capital plus liabilities when you make capital the subject of the formula you do assets minus liabilities and uh, what you would do here is 85720 minus 27400 which will give me a capital of 58,320. This is my capital. Okay, then they are saying during the year ended 31st January 2017, they have given you the following information which you need to solve first and then make the statement of affairs at 31st January 2017, which means you need to make statement of affairs at the end of the year. So here they are saying Virat's drawings amounted to 11,320. That's the drawings during the year for Virat. Then they are saying Virat per, Virat's personal motor vehicle valued at 15200 which was transferred into the business this is going to be if you guys make a double entry for this you debit the motor vehicle account you write 15200 debit motor vehicle and credit uh, capital so you're bringing in your personal virat is bringing in his personal motor vehicle into the business which means it's capital now so he's transferring some of his personal assets to the business then they are saying well, one third of the loan was repaid and it was agreed that the balance should be repaid in 2019. So the one third of the loan here, the loan from ASING that is 15,000, one third of this is repaid. So we are left with a loan uh, loan of, uh, we are left with an amount of 10,000. So 10,000 is my long term liability now, uh, which I'll write at the end of the year. Then they're saying Virat compared his assets and liabilities on 31st January 2017 with those on 1st February 2016 and found trade payables had increased by 6%. Trade payables at the start of the year was 7100 and when you increase this by 6%, so you can do 7100 multiplied by 1.06, that, that'll actually automatically add uh, the six percent increase and can give you the answer or you or, or what you can do is 7100 multiplied by six divided by 100 will give you 426 so 426 is the amount by which trade payables have increased so 7100 plus 426 will give you 7526 which is the new trade payables 27526 then they are saying trade receivables had increased by 3310 so trade receivables at the start of the year were 8120 and when you are adding 3310 to 8120 you will get 11,430 this is the new trade receivables then they are saying 
Inventory was valued at selling price of 12,900 after a markup of 20%. So I always tell this where that when whenever markup is given, you assume that the cost of the inventory here would be 100%. And if uh, we valued the inventory at selling price, so that means 100% uh, plus 20%, and this 120% is going to be your uh, selling price. So 12,900, if that is 120%, uh, what is 100% is going to give you the value, the cost of the inventory and that will be 10,750. This is the cost of my inventory at the end of the year and you, you need to value your inventory at cost. You can't value your inventory at selling price. Then they are saying bank overdraft had increased by 3,100. Bank overdraft at start was 5,300. 50, when you add 3,100 to that, that means your negative is increasing. That means um, it will be a, a, a greater negative value here that will be 8400 because 5300 was at the start of the year and then when you added 3100 that means your negative has increased it has become 8400 so the bank overdraft draft is 8400 at the end of the year cash in hand amounted to hundred dollars that's a current asset then they're saying on 31st January 2017, it was decided to write off 130 as irrecoverable from, from the amount owed by trade receivables at that date. So ending amount of trade receivables here is 11,430 from which you need to subtract 130. So 11,430 minus 130 will give you 11,300 multiplied by 2% will give you 226 as your uh, provision for doubtful debts. Okay, then they're saying provide for depreciation of fixtures and fittings 20% per annum on cost. The fixtures and fittings at cost is 9400. You multiply this by, by 20%, so 9400 multiplied by 20% will give you 1818. So 20% uh, so of 9400. Then they're saying provide for depreciation of the motor vehicle 25% on the valuation when transferred into the business. So when transferred into the business, the motor vehicle's value was 15,200. And then you multiply this by 25%. So you get a value of 3,800. Then they are saying maintain the premises at cost. So you need to keep that as, as it is at cost. You don't need to depreciate premises. They are saying prepare a statement of affairs at 31st January 2017, showing the total capital at that date. So interestingly, because we haven't maintained uh, full double entry records, we don't have the revenue here. We don't have here all the expenses, all the incomes. We don't have purchases. We don't have purchases returns. So we can't calculate profit for the year. So that is why what we are doing is that we have calculated capital at start. Now we'll make statement of affairs, which is just like statement of financial position you just make it in the same way as you make statement of financial position and then uh, you will get opening capital and then you'll also have closing capital from this statement of affairs you need to find it out i'll show you how you make that you start with non-current assets so you write here non-current assets you write in the first column cost you write in the second column accumulated depreciation you write in the third column net book value then you have premises which you need to maintain at cost. So premises at the start of the year was 58,500. So I write 58,500 here. Accumulated depreciation will not be any value here. And then net book value will be 58,500. Then you write here uh, fixtures and fittings. Fixtures and fittings cost is 9,400. Accumulated depreciation is 1880. So the value you get for net book value is 7520. For motor vehicles, you write here motor vehicles. You write in the first column 15,200. In the second column, you write 3,800, which is the depreciation of the motor vehicles. When you subtract 3,800 from 15,200, you get a value of 11,400. This is my net book value of motor vehicles at the end of the year. Then you need to add these three values. So 58,500 plus 7,520 plus 11,400 will give me 77. 420. This is my total non-current assets. Then I have current assets as my second heading in the statement of financial position. So I write here current assets. The first current asset is always inventory, which is the least liquid current asset and closing inventory here would be 10,750. We calculated that we had been given a, a a closing inventory at the value at selling price valued at selling price which for which we actually calculated cost using the markup so 10,750 is my closing inventory then I write here trade receivables so trade receivables were 11,430 
minus 130 is irrecoverable debt so you get 11,300 then you write here less provision for doubtful debts and provision for doubtful debts I calculated here 226 uh, so I'll subtract that so I write here 226 and I subtract that so the answer that I get here will be 11,074 then I have one more current asset that is cash in hand here uh, I don't have bank because bank is a negative balance so I write here cash in hand so I write here cash I write here 100 and then I add these three so I get a value of 21,924. This is my total current asset. Non-current assets that is 77,420 plus 21,924 will give me an, a total of 99,344. These will be my total assets. So I write here total assets. And then the second part of the statement of financial position has capital and liabilities. So I don't know capital at end. I don't know the profit for the year. I don't, uh, I cannot apply that formula. Capital at start, add profit for the year, less drawing. So I'll just use the balancing figure to find out uh, capital. And basically I'll just uh, calculate it backwards. So I'll do that in a bit, but capital, I'll just keep it blank for now. And then I'll write here non-current liabilities. So non-current liabilities, I had one bank loan that was loan from A Singh. And loan from A Singh was, um, I had repaid some of it, one third of it uh, during the year. So I'm left with uh, two thirds of the loan. So loan from A Singh. I write here 10,000, which is two thirds of the loan, which is remaining, which I need to repay. Then I have current liabilities. So for current liabilities, I have number one is my trade payables. So I write here trade payables. Trade payables here is going to be 7526. So I write here trade payables in the second column, 7526. Then I write here bank overdraft. So my bank overdraft increased and it increased to 8400 so i write here 8400 and that's it for my um, current liabilities because i just have two current liabilities that is trade payables and bank overdraft when i add these both i get a total of 15926 now what's going to happen is that your total assets basically assets is equal to uh, capital plus liabilities now capital is basically unknown here uh, which I need to find out so total assets is the sum of capital and liabilities so the sum of capital and liabilities is going to be 99,344 if the statement of financial position balances you basically have uh, total assets are exactly equal to capital and liabilities so if I use 99,344 and I calculate backwards so 99,344 minus 15,926 minus 10,000 will give me this value that is capital at end. Uh, basically this value that will be um, 73,418. This is my capital at end. Now this capital at end, I have capital at start of the year, which I calculated in the first part. I have capital at end now, which is 73,418. I have during the year, I have uh, that capital that I brought into the business that was 15,200 uh, which was a motor vehicle and I do know the drawings as well that is 11,320 so in the next part they are asking you to make a capital account and they want you to calculate profit or loss of the year uh, through the capital account so what you do here is that you write here 1st February uh, 2016 you write here balance brought down and you write here 58,320, which is my opening capital. So I write here 58,320. And then uh, on the credit side, I need to write motor vehicles because during the year we brought a motor vehicle of 15,200. So motor vehicle account will be debited and capital account will be credited. So I write here motor vehicles 15,200 in the motor vehicle account. I'll write that on the debit side. I'll write capital in the uh, details. Then uh, I don't know what's my profit for the year. So I write here profit for the year. And this is what I'm going to calculate from this account. So this I'll make a star over here. And then we have a uh, draw drawings during the year uh, in the question are given uh, those are 11,320 so I write here drawings and I write here 11,320 and this will again be the last date uh, because you don't have any specific date so I'll write here 31st January 2017 
on the same date 31st january 2017 we have calculated the closing capital as well so closing capital here is balance carried down so balance carried down will be um, 73418 which will be your closing capital 73418 but now we will have to calculate profit for the year uh, so what you'll do is that you will total the credit side and then you'll also total the debit side and subtract both of them so total of credit side here would be so what i'm simply doing here is that i am totaling my debit side that is 84738 that's my total of debit side and then i subtract 58320 and 15200 from that so i get get 11,218. This is my profit for the year. I'll write here the last date 31st January 2017 and this account will balance at 84,738 84, on both sides. This balance carried down will become your balance brought down. So you write here balance brought down and you write here 73,418. This is going to be my uh, opening capital for next year. So I'll write here first February 2017 and my balance brought down will be 73,418. Um, and that's it for the capital account. This is the fixed format of capital account. You start with a balance brought down on the credit side. If you brought additional capital, you record that on the credit side because whenever you bring additional capital, so in this case, we were bringing in motor vehicles, we debited the motor vehicle account and we credited the capital account. If we'll bring in more money into the business, you debit the bank account and you credit the capital account because capital is increasing because of that. Drawing Drawings is debited in this account because drawings decreases capital and profit is credited in this account because profit also increases capital. Uh, if there is a loss, you record that on the debit side because loss is going to decrease capital. So you record that on the debit side. Uh, but yes, in the next part, they're saying Virat was disappointed with the final results of his business. For the year ended 31st January 2017, he decided to try to obtain financial statements of other businesses so that he could compare their results with those of his own business. Explain to Two factors where I should consider when comparing his results with those of another business. Number one is that uh, in both the statement of financial position, the statement of financial position and the income statement of his own business and the statement of financial position of someone else's business or the accounting information of someone else's business, all of these will not record non-monetary non factors. So non-monetary factors are not recorded in the statements, uh, financial statements. So non-monetary factors, for example, the competence of the manager. So how competent and how efficient the manager is, you cannot know that by um, uh, by looking at the uh, financial information that is presented in the income statement and statement of financial position. So competence of the manager or, you know, any um, motivation of the workforce, that's also a non-monetary factor, which is not recorded in the uh, financial statements of any business so uh, that is also a limitation of um, the financial statements so whenever he's also when he's comparing with uh, those of another business so he should compare with someone who is in the the business who is in the same trade so business the business the businesses which are in the same trade so whatever Virat is selling, the other business should be selling the same product so that it's more comparable. If Virat is selling something else and the other business is selling something else, then the business, the nature of business itself is very different. So uh, you can't compare those two businesses. Then the businesses uh, should be of the same size. Also, one more thing, uh, if there is... Um, if there is a business which is very well established so there are two businesses and one business and one business is a relatively newer business and the other one is established and they have spent a lot of years in that business so then those two businesses don't become very comparable because um, someone who is established is going to earn more revenue as compared to someone who is very new in this uh, in any in the same business so selling the same product but someone who is new would sell uh, would uh, uh, earn less revenue as compared to someone who is more established in the same business. So thank you so much for watching. That's it for this question.